All right, full disclaimer. Right now, as I speak to you, I currently have a ton of just gunk right here in my throat. Um, been fighting a little cold, got all this chest congestion, and honestly, don't have a clue when it's gonna go away. And if you're shooting videos like this, you really can't afford to take many days off. And so I'm gonna do this anyway, because I still have a voice, and we're gonna use it. So, that being said, I hope that doesn't impact the quality of this video in any way whatsoever. If it does, you can complain down below, let me know, and who knows, maybe we'll, there's a handout, just, just use the handout. That, that's a suitable alternative, I think. But anyway, today we're gonna talk about universal adhesives, and we're gonna discuss a little bit about things that you can do in your practice to make these work better for you. So if you reference back to around April 2017, you'll find a video that I did on universal adhesives. It was called, How Universal Are These Adhesives? And basically in that video, I discussed some of the features of universal adhesives and some things that you wanna consider if you're using these in your practice. Now let's look at some of the highlights from that video, just as kind of a recap, or at least kind of bring us back up to speed to what we're gonna to discuss today. So one of the things we mentioned in that specific video was that universal adhesives can be used with direct and indirect restorations. Universal adhesives give you options. And one of the things that you can choose when you're using these is how you want to actually etch the tooth. Now, most of the universal adhesives are gonna have an etch component incorporated into the adhesive. But you can still use a separate phosphoric acid etch if you like. So you have three options. You can do a total etch of the tooth, you can do a selective etch of the tooth, or you can choose to do a self etch only of the tooth. Most of the universal adhesives that are on the market today contain a silane. So they can be used as a silanating agent. Now, many of the universal adhesives contain what's called 10-MDP. It's a phosphate monomer that makes these universal adhesives more compatible with zirconia and other types of metals. Now, one of the things I mentioned in that previous video is that when you're using a universal adhesive, if you want to get the most out of that adhesive, you really want to use that as a total etch or selective etch technique or procedure. Now, what we know is if you use a universal adhesive in a self etch mode, the actual etch in the adhesive is not very acidic. It's a higher pH. So you're not going to actually etch the tooth as well as you would if you use a separate phosphoric acid etch. So definitely, if you want a really good bond to the tooth, and especially a really good bond to the enamel, you really need to do either a total etch or a selective etch of the tooth prior to applying your universal adhesive. Now there's been multiple studies that actually show you get a better bond to your indirect restorations if you use a separate silane primer in addition to your actual universal adhesive. Now, a recent study in the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry actually demonstrated on a lithium disilicate crown, if you use a separate silane in addition to your universal adhesive, you get a better bond to the tooth. I'm gonna to recommend that you actually etch the crown with your hydrofluoric acid, then apply a separate silane to the crown, follow that up with your universal adhesive. Now, most of the universal adhesives do not require that you light cure the adhesive in the crown. You can actually just leave it as is, and then when you're ready to submit, you go ahead and submit the crown onto the tooth. All right, so that really recaps the last video that I did on universal adhesives. But one of the things I wanna to do today is actually give you some new information that I read recently in the journal Decisions in Dentistry. And one of the articles they had in there on universal adhesives actually talks about some of the other things you may wanna consider if you're using these in your clinic. <laughs> 
Now, if you think back to just basic bonding in dentistry, we have three major components of a bonding agent. You have the edge, you have a primer, and you have a bond. Now, when we're talking about a universal adhesive, we're actually suggesting that all three of these components are actually combined into one bottle. And so that's what we oftentimes term as a simplified adhesive. So anytime somebody uses a term simplified adhesive, that basically means that the bond component or the adhesive component is combined with either the primer or with the etch and the primer. And so that's significant to know because anytime you're using a simplified adhesive, there's always gonna be the potential for incompatibility with other types of materials. Now, one common compatibility issue we can see with universal adhesives is when they're used in conjunction with a dual cure resin, such as a dual cure composite core material or actually a resin cement. Now, one of the things that happens is you actually have a very acidic universal adhesive. Remember, there's acidic components or monomers incorporated into that adhesive. And so what happens is, is the surface of that adhesive is very acidic. And that acidity can actually prevent the resin, the dual cure resin, from actually fully polymerizing at that interface. So that's a big issue because if it doesn't fully polymerize at that interface, your bond to the actual adhesive is gonna be very weak and very poor. That's always gonna be a point of weakness in the actual restorative material. Now, many of the universal adhesives that are on the market today actually recommend that you use what's called a dual cure activator. And you basically mix this dual cure activator with the adhesive prior to applying the adhesive to the tooth. And that minimizes or eliminates this incompatibility issue with dual cure resins. In my clinic, we actually use the product Reliax Ultimate. It's a self-adhesive resin cement and that cement actually contains a dual cure activator. And oddly enough, 3M recommends that you only use Scotch Bond Universal with that cement. And so because the Relax Ultimate contains a dual cure activator, you don't have to apply a separate dual cure activator or add that to the Scotch Bond Universal prior to cementing the restoration. However, Let's say, for example, you wanted to use Reliax Unisim, another product by 3M. That specific product does not actually contain a dual cure activator. So if you're gonna use a universal adhesive like Scotch Bond Universal with that specific cement, you have to add a dual cure activator to the Scotch Bond before you actually cement with Reliax Unisim. <laughs> So another thing we need to consider with universal adhesives is when do we actually light cure them? Do we light cure the adhesive before we submit a crown or do we not light cure it? We go ahead and submit the crown and then we light cure the resin cement and the adhesive together. And you know, many manufacturers will sometimes recommend that you light cure prior to cementing the crown while others make this step more an optional uh, step. So you have to really consider what are you gonna do and what are the pros and cons of each approach. So on the one hand, if you light cure the adhesive prior to actually cementing your crown, then it's possible that that adhesive could be pulled up enough to where you cannot seat your crown all the way down to your established margin. So that could be a potential issue. However, Prior to universal adhesives and simplified adhesives coming onto the market, we were cementing crowns by light curing the adhesive prior to uh, crown cementation anyway. So we were doing it for years. So it may not be a huge issue, but you still need to be very cognizant of how much adhesive you're applying to the tooth and not allow it to really bulk up and potentially prevent the seating of the crown. Now on the other hand, if you do not light cure the adhesive and then you submit the crown, you're gonna be light curing the adhesive at the same time you cure your resin cement. Well, there's a problem with that because you don't really have a very good established hybrid layer because your adhesive sitting on the surface of the tooth, it's intermingled a little bit with the collagen, 
but you haven't really polymerized that. So the hybrid layer is not completely set. It's not hard. And so if you cement your crown over top of that, prior to light curing, you're actually crushing that dentin collagen and you're dispersing a lot of that bonding agent out. So your hybrid layer is not gonna be as established, it's not gonna be as thick, and it's not gonna be as strong as it could be. Now I find that if I am bonding a restoration, I'm gonna be using a resin cement. I have started to do more immediate dentin sealing. And basically what that means is after the prep is done, we actually apply the bonding agent at that specific time frame. And then later, when I'm getting ready to deliver the crown, I apply the bonding agent again. Now, when I apply it immediately after the prep, I'm actually light curing this. When I apply it at the end, right before crown cementation, I'm not light curing it. And the reason why I'm comfortable not light curing it at that final step right before the crown goes on is because I've already established a really good hybrid layer initially with the immediate dentin sealing. So if you want more information on immediate dentin sealing, actually this month I did two separate videos on immediate dentin sealing. One of them is more of a what are the benefits of doing immediate dentin sealing and the other video is kind of more of a walkthrough of how you would actually do that. The handout for that video, I actually gave you three options using OptiBond FL, Clearfill SE, or Scotchbond Universal as your adhesive. So you have some uh, options there to use in your clinic. And if you use a product that I don't mention, shoot me an email, let me know. I'll help you brainstorm how to best do that procedure in your clinic. So in regards to do you like cure or do you not like cure prior to cementing your crown, well, a recent study actually reported that you get higher bond strengths to the tooth if you like cure prior to final crown cementation. But that study did not incorporate immediate dentin sealing into the actual study. So that being said, if you do immediate dentin sealing as part of your practice, when you apply the bonding agent right before crown cementation, you don't have to necessarily cure the bonding agent because you've already cured it when you did your immediate dentin sealing. If, however, you do not do immediate dentin sealing, the studies that are being published more recently are showing that you get a better bond strength if you like cure the adhesive. So, if you do not do immediate dentin sealing, you really need to like cure your bonding agent prior to cementing with resin cement. All right, so the last really big update I wanna give you on universal adhesives is related to when you use these in a selective etch mode. Now, personally, I prefer to do either a total etch or selective etch when using universal adhesives. Studies show that if you etch enamel with phosphoric acid, you're gonna get a better bond to the enamel. Studies also show that if the actual universal adhesive contains 10MDP, a self-etch mode to the dentin is actually really good and it's very strong. So selective etch is very, very attractive option because you're getting a good bond to the enamel by using phosphoric acid and you're also getting a good bond to the dentin by using a 10MDP containing bonding agent. Now, if you've ever done selective etching of the enamel, you'll know it's really hard not to get etch on the dentin, if not impossible. And you don't really want the etch running down the side of the tooth. You don't want it running to adjacent teeth. You don't want it you know, running all over the dentin. You really wanna to try to isolate that and selectively etch your enamel only. So one thing you need to consider is what is the viscosity of your phosphoric acid etch? Now, personally, if I'm gonna be bonding a indirect restoration, like a glass ceramic, like lithium disilicate, I really like to use Teflon tape on the adjacent teeth, especially when I'm going through my bonding of the tooth. And really I do this so I don't get etch and I don't get bonding agent all over the adjacent teeth. However, even if you're using Teflon tape, you really probably should consider the viscosity of your phosphoric acid etch and use something that's a little bit more viscous or a little bit more thick. 
less likely to run because then you can selectively etch that enamel a little bit easier because the gel in the etch itself is not really runny or flowing freely on places you don't want it to go. Now, out of curiosity, I actually cracked open a Henry Schein catalog and actually went to the etch section just to see how etches were advertised. And oddly enough, some manufacturers actually advertise that their gels are more viscous and less likely to flow. Although not all manufacturers actually comment on the actual viscosity of the etch. So unfortunately, you may have to try out a few different brands of etch to find one that works best if you're doing selective etching of the enamel in your practice. All right, so that's really it for this universal adhesive update. I hope you got some good tips there, some things that you need to consider when you're using these products in your clinic. And you know, the big thing is, I always say this, it's like I'm a broken record, but when you're using materials, you need to read the manufacturer's instructions and you need to know how to best use that material in your practice. You know, we complete the manufacturing process of all the materials in our practice. And if you don't know how to use them appropriately, you can actually have very detrimental effects on the patient or on the tooth. And honestly, I think all of us wanna do really good dentistry and we want our stuff to last as long as possible. So make sure you know your products, learn ways that you can maximize the use of these products and basically learn ways to get the most out of them. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any further questions or any comments, just let me know.